Hey folks, JD here, and today I wanted to talk a little bit more about this. This is the 590 nanometer converted Canon EOS camera, and this is I use this for shooting infrared. So as I say, this is a converted camera. This isn't. There's no filter on the lens. It is actually converted. There we are. You've got a nice little sensor in there, which is converted to see uh, to use the 590 nanometer spectrum. If you haven't caught up on all my videos to do with infrared and all the Canon brand and all the cameras that I have and all the and everything I've gone into so far, you will find full links in the description should you want to check them out. So today. I'm going to show you some examples of this camera and show you exactly how I shoot infrared using this. Now, different infrared cameras and different uh, different nanometerage requires a different approach to how you are going to take a uh, to take um, to shoot photos. So normally, with a full color camera, you go out. It's in the day, whether it's rain or sun, doesn't matter. You go out, take a load of photos. Chances are, if you're on auto setting, you're going to have a pretty good photo. Now, what I would say with infrared, you want to get off the auto mentality and start stepping into the manual mentality because you're going to need to do a lot of manual setting setup and preparation before you go any further so looking at this what i tend to do i tend to wait until i have a very bright sunny day it doesn't matter so much for the for the 590 nanometer but it does for a couple of other uh, infrareds which we'll go into in a couple of other days so for the second you can see my settings set up there on the bottom so i have a standard iso dialed in at 200 my exposure is on minus one pretty much everything else is standard now i shoot in let me show you i shoot in full raw 16 by 9 I, ha I like to have a grid because I like to use rule of thirds. Um, I have one shot autofocus. Uh, everything else is pretty much standard. See, I don't let the I don't let the ISO if it is on if it is max. I don't let it go to any higher than six uh, sixty four hundred. This camera will go up to twelve thousand ISO, and I do not want that because the higher you go with your ISO the more noisy your photos are going to look, especially with infrared. It almost doubles what the standard noise levels would be on a standard photo. And then you've got your custom white balance. Now, what you first have to do with a lot of infrared cameras is you first have to take a photo. So you have to choose a photo, you have to take one, and then you have to set your white balance. But before you do that, you've got to know exactly what ISO to take. So, or what ISO to use, rather. So if you are using um if you are in 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 a day which has full light and you have no clouds or have limited clouds and if you have sun then i would recommend shooting at iso of 200 most definitely that is going to give you a very very nice light bright colored photo also if you want to crop in and to a particular part of the photo you have that ability because you have more than enough digital detail uh, optical detail rather in that photo so you're not going to have a very noisy photo at the end of it now saying that you're dialed on in on 200 then also you're going to want to be on minus one probably because your photos don't forget your infrared is going to make photos seem very very light if i give you an example of this so here are some infrared photos i've taken with this particular 590 camera as you can see the difference is there there we go between this photo and that taken pretty much exactly the same frame almost but you can see I'm using, there we are, no auto exposure, so that's on zero. And then here I've dialed it down to minus one, I think. And then, oh no, they're both on minus one, looking at it. But this one is a lot nicer, so I probably have adjusted the ISO settings on that. So one gives you a nice output, the other one gives you a very light output. You want to sort of step away from the very light, something like that, because your focus is going to be on the sky, so therefore you're not going to get a good photo. So what you have to do, first of all, well you don't have to, but it's recommended, and I, and I would recommend doing the same, is take a photo, and then what you want to do is you want to set your white balance to that particular photo. So then, custom white balance, then you choose an image, based on whatever you want your standard your standard white balance to be and then click set and then every th every other photo you take for the length of this camera being on its white balance will be tuned in to that photo 
So therefore, that's fine. So I know now that every single photo I take is going to have a standard white balance. Everything else is going to be fine. My ISO is 200. As the cloud cover comes over and the light alters, I'm going to be altering that ISO. Not I'm going to, with infrared, I try not to go anywhere above 400. I try and stick it to either 100 or 200. I definitely will not be using any auto there whatsoever. And then what you want to do is just take a photo. And that's it. And then from there, then you have the start of a nice infrared um, infrared photo, which you can then go back with and you can start to to edit. But before we get to the editing, that's going to come in a separate video. So with all these auto with all these manual levels dialed in, so I've got ISO of 200 minus one and exposure. I should be good then just to start taking some nice infrared photos. So don't forget, as the cloud cover moves, as it starts to get a little darker, a little lighter, you're going to want to be altering these ISO levels. Nothing above 400, I would say, because uh, that way then when you put the, all the, the, the images through the post processing, you are then going to find that you still have a very nice clear photo with not a lot of a noise and you don't want that noise let's try and get rid of that as much as we possibly can so that is pretty much that that's just a very quick look at at how to start taking photos with a 590 nanometer camera now it's very simple you can just carry on without there being any problems and the more that you do it you start to learn little foibles you start to then figure out exactly how this starts to work and then you start to automatically you start to see the light change uh what i would say is you want to keep the sun to your left or to your right don't shoot into the sun because otherwise the sky the very important part of the sky that you're going to want to see the clouds because infrared clouds just look like fluffy candy floss it looks it just looks magical if you've got the sun in front of you you're going to have a whiteout or you're just going to have a total a total uh, sun blotch in the in the center of your photo and it totally takes away from from the overall effect so i would say you want to be going Going into it with the sun to your left or to your right, make sure you've got a lot of, of light to take it as well. Don't be taking anything in the night because you're not going to be getting anything other than noise. Wait for a nice sunny day, whether it be in the winter, spring, summer or autumn, it doesn't matter. You just need a lot of light. And then you should find you've got some fantastic photos, a little bit like this. So all those photos were taken on this camera. Uh, and I think they absolutely look fantastic. They were all taken at different day, different days, different levels of sun. That's why some some are lighter, some are darker. What I also like about it is it just because you get a nice orange hue, it doesn't mean it's always going to be hot orange. Less light you have, the orange turns to dark red. The more light you have, the orange turns to yellow. So you you really do go through a lot of the different color spectrums uh, with using the five ninety nanometer camera. So far. I'm totally taken with it. This is fantastic. I had it off a guy on eBay. Um, and he's done a very good job of the cut of, of the conversion uh, and I overall think it's just been brilliant and I'm looking forward to using this a lot more as time goes on. Right then my friends that's it for today. Please join me again tomorrow when we're going to be talking about the 720 nanometer camera. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD you've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already please like and subscribe and ring that bell too. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time my friends, happy shooting.